Hi, my name is Bas van Hoorn and I'm a pre-PhD student at Maastricht University Department of Nutrition and Movement Sciences. In this video, I will walk you through our review on cool down after exercise. An active cool down, which includes activities such as low intensity running or cycling, is perhaps the most widely used post-exercise recovery modality. It is widely believed that a cool down facilitates recovery by removing lactate, reducing muscle soreness and producing muscle stiffness. Some individuals also believe that an improved recovery due to a cooldown can prevent injuries during a subsequent training session. I have always wondered whether an active cooldown is really effective at enhancing recovery and whether it does indeed prevent injuries compared to just doing nothing after exercise, or in other words, compared to a passive cooldown. In contrast to many other recovery interventions, such as compression garments or cold water immersion, Nobody has ever performed an extensive review of the effects of a cooldown. Therefore, I decided to write this review together with Jonathan Peak, who has been doing a lot of research related to post exercise recovery. So, if you go to figure one, here you can see um, all of the potential effects we reviewed in this paper. We have subdivided the paper into four major sections. After introduction and methods, we first discussed the effects of an active cooldown on sports performance as illustrated by the stopwatch here, in section three. In section four, we discussed the physiological and psychological effects, which are all illustrated in the figure, such as the effects on lactate and blood and muscle, the effects on muscle soreness and markers of muscle damage, and markers of psychological recovery, mood state and sleep. And we also discussed the long-term effects of an active cooldown on injuries and the long-term adaptive response. Finally, we also briefly discuss static uh, stretching and foam lowering as secondary recovery interventions because they are frequently performed in combination with an active cool arc. So as shown in figure one, there are many physiological and psychological effects that we reviewed, but I don't have time to discuss all of them in this video. So I just, uh, just discuss a few of them. So first, the effects on sports performance, section three. We've subdivided the section into the effects on same day performance and next day performance. For the effects on same day performance, uh, they are mostly relevant for elite athletes who train or compete more than once a day. Uh, re with regard to their findings, so the effects of uh, cool down on same day performance, most studies found trivial effects and sometimes even small detrimental effects. Therefore, an active cool down does generally not improve sports performance later on the same day when the time between successive performances is more than four hours and it may even have some detrimental effects. So when we look at the effects on next day performance, results are more conflicting, with most studies reporting trivial effects, some studies reporting beneficial effects, but a small minority also reporting decreases in performance. Overall, a cool down does therefore also not seem very effective at improving next day performance, but in contrast to same day performance, benefit is more likely than harm. So all the results for performance are also summarized in the extensive table two in the paper, which you can uh, read and it's freely available to download. So in section 4.1, here we discuss the removal of metabolic byproducts such as lactate. And most studies show that lactate is removed faster from blood as most people also believe. But it is not necessarily removed faster from muscle tissue with an active cooldown, which is perhaps more important than a faster removal from blood. Nevertheless, as we discussed in this section, it is questionable whether a faster removal of lactate is an appropriate marker of recovery. Then in section 4.2, we discuss the effects of muscle soreness. In contrast to common belief, most studies did not show a significant effect of a cool down on muscle soreness up to 96 hours after exercise, compared to with doing no cool down, suggesting that a cool down has no beneficial effects on muscle soreness. Then in section 4.11, um, which is here, so we reviewed the effect on psychological measures of recovery. Uh, interestingly, most studies did not find beneficial effects of a cooldown on psychological recovery as assessed with questionnaires, but most athletes did mention they preferred an active cooldown over performing no cooldown. This could indicate that either the questionnaires did not adequately assess psychological recovery, or it can reflect a placebo effect whereby individuals believe that the active cooldown is more beneficial than performing no cooldown due to the popularity in society and its proposed benefits. So, with regard to the long term effects, Section 4.12, 13, 14. 
Um, Mort's evidence indicates that regularly performing an active cooldown after exercise does not affect injury rates, although more research is required to investigate the effects of the type of cooldown, its duration, and the type of sport. For some recovery interventions, such as cold water immersion, it has been shown that regular use of a recovery intervention reduced the stress strain to the body and thereby decreased the adaptation to training. We wondered whether a similar effect existed for a cooldown. Unfortunately, only one study investigated this, and this study found that an active cooldown did not attenuate the long-term adaptive response. However, conflicting evidence for the attenuating effects of other recovery modalities, such as cold water immersion, has been reported, and more research investigating the effects of an active cooldown on the long-term adaptive response is therefore required. I will skip the effects of static stretching and foregrounding and go to inclusion and practical applications. Section 6. Evidence in this review shows that active cooldowns are largely ineffective for improving most psychophysiological markers of post-exercise recovery, but may nevertheless offer some benefits compared with a passive cooldown. The mode, intensity and duration of a cooldown and activity preceding the cooldown will likely influence the effectiveness of a cooldown on recovery, and these effects may also differ between individuals. It is therefore difficult to recommend one optimal active cooldown protocol for all individuals in all situations. We have, however, provided some general guidelines in the paper which can be followed to minimize negative effects and maximize the positive effects. If you're interested in these guidelines or the psychophysiological effects, you can freely download the paper at the Sports Medicine website or you can request it on my research gate page. Just Google the title and you will probably find the paper. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me on my email or Twitter at Bas van Horen. Thank you.